So a farmer is a farmer because he owns soil. In other words, he has a title deed. Someone does not have the title deed and tries to put something in that soil. He is called a devourer. He's trying to poison your soil. He doesn't have covenant. A title deed is covenant. <music> 2 Corinthians chapter 9, once again from the Message Bible, verse 10. The most generous God, the most generous God, who gives seed to the farmer. Now, no matter what translation you write, you, you're looking at, underline gives seed to the farmer or seed to the sower. And bread for meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. So we see the process that God wants you to be generous. He's created us that way. And then He puts seed into our lives so that we can produce what's necessary to be generous with. So can you see generosity is linked to sowing and reaping? A generous person understands sowing and reaping, giving and receiving. That's why Paul wrote to the church in Philippi and said, No one shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. See, a lot were giving to get. That's an immature way of looking at giving. That's why when people get upset with, with giving, and it doesn't work, and you're just getting people to give because you're telling them they're going to get. That kind of, that's immature way of looking at it. Don't understand the principle of a generous lifestyle. A person who lives a generous lifestyle understands that when I give, there will be a reciprocation. There will be a harvest, but the purpose of the harvest is so that I can give again. I sow in order to sow again. So that others can benefit out of the reaping process. See, a farmer that plants a field full of wheat, all that wheat will produce hundreds of loaves of bread. He can only eat so many loaves. He's not doing it for his own personal kitchen. He's doing it to serve a nation. A farmer sees the bigger picture. That's the difference between someone who grows a few vegetables in their backyard that they can pluck them and then put them in the soup. That's not a sower. That's a backyard gardener. <laughs> Are you listening? A sower, a farmer, produces a field full because he's got more people to meet needs for. And he sows intending to reap the best harvest so that he has more seed to sow again. So a true farmer, by nature, is generous. Let me see, are there any farmers here? Keep their hand up and say, a true farmer, by nature, is generous. So the harvest is the reward of his generosity. The level of generosity, his level of generosity, will determine the success of his harvest. Now listen to this. A farmer is not someone who has seed. God gives seed to a farmer. If he's giving seed to the farmer, then there was a time he didn't have seed. So the seed did not make him the farmer. 
What makes a farmer a farmer? If he owns a farm. Hello? A farmer is not a farmer if he's sitting behind a computer. A farmer is not a farmer if he's laying bricks. He can run a computer, he can lay bricks, but that's not why we call him a farmer. A farmer's a farmer because he has a farm. Yeah. Write it down and help you remember next time. <laughs> Say that a farmer farm. is a farmer because he has a farm. In other words, a farmer works with soil, not with seed. He will use the seed, but the seed already has the full potential in it. A farmer cannot improve his seed. If he gets a bag full of seed, that's what he's got. He can't improve the seed. So to get the best out of that seed, he works with soil. See, when you understand that, how many you got that? When you understand that, the tithe makes perfect sense. See, people that don't get what I've just said about the farmer will argue whether the tithe is under the law and whether it's Old Testament and whether we have to do it and we're already blessed by Jesus so we don't need the tithe to bless worth. Everything you just said is true. But that's not why I tithe. I don't tithe to buy the blessing. I'm already blessed. Yeah. Have you born again? Say, so I'm already blessed. Amen. Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14. The fact that Jesus died for you, you are blessed. You don't tithe to get the blessing. Yeah. Why do you tithe? Why do you tithe? Malachi chapter 3. See, once you get this, I'm going to remind you, a farmer is someone who works with soil. He can't improve the seed. He can only improve the soil. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, bring? How much? How much? What does all mean? All. Why? Because that's what all means. Bring all the? Tithe. Tithe. Everybody say tithe. Now, the tithe, the word tithe is not a religious word. It's a mathematical term. It's an old English word that we don't use much today except in church. And that's why we think it's a church word. But in old English, they used it all the time when they were still saying thou and thou shaltest and notest. And the tithe means 10%. That's all it means. Simply 10%. 10%. So 10% of an income, let's say someone earns a thousand rand, what would a tithe be? You need a calculator? It's easy, isn't it? 10%, you just drop the last digit, take the last digit away, you're left with 10%. A hundred, isn't that right? If someone earns 5,000 rand, what's a tithe? See how quick you learn at church. <laughs> so let's say someone earns 100,000 rand. What's the tithe? 10,000 rand. Someone says, but that's a lot of money. No, it's not. It's still 10%. See, that's the awesome power of God's Word, that He's asking you for 10%. It's not, it doesn't matter how big it is or how small it is. If someone picks up 10 rand last week and brings one rand, he gets exactly the same result as the person that gave the 10,000 rand. Can you see that? Let's see how many of you... If, if God gave you a million rand this week, you would bring a hundred thousand rand. Let me see. Without a doubt. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, amen. <laughs> Ooh, million rand. 
Some of you may have already heard the story, but for those that haven't, it always reminds me of these two guys that are just walking along and heard a message similar to this, and they're so excited. And one guy says, hey, listen, if you had 100 sheep, would you give 50 sheep to God? And he's like, what? 100 sheep? I've never seen so many sheep in my life before. And, and 50 would still be good. So yeah, if God gave me 100 sheep, I'd give him 50 sheep. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Amen. And they keep walking and... Then his friend bumps him and says, hey, listen, if you had 50 cows, would you give 25 cows to God? He says, yes, amen. Man, if I had 50 cows, I'd be rich. Even 25 cows, I'd still be rich. So if I had, God gave me 50, yeah, easy, give him 25. Hallelujah, I still got 25. Wonderful. That's great. And they keep walking. Then she bumps him and says, hey, listen. If you had two pigs, would you give one pig to God? He says, oh, that's not fair. You know I got two pigs. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to say, yes, hey, man, when you don't have it. Give me a million rand, I'll give a hundred thousand. But what happened this week? What happened last month when you received from God your income, your salary? And we're saying, Lord, if you give me a million, I'll bring a hundred thousand. But today you gave me a thousand rand. Am I going to bring the one hundred? Am I going to bring all the tithe? Because that's what he asked for, bring all the tithe. You see, the Bible tells in Leviticus chapter 29, verse 18, uh, 27, Leviticus 27, verse 30. Leviticus 27, verse 30, all the tithe of the land is the Lord's. Whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. It is holy. It is holy. It is holy holy, it's sanctified, it's set apart. It belongs to God. So the tithe isn't even mine. Come on. You've heard me give the illustration before that if I've lent someone's car and I have their car key, and then all of a sudden I feel generous and I go and I say, yeah, I'm giving you a car, and I hand them their key. They don't always look so excited. Why are they not excited? It was their car in the first place. What did I do? I used it for a while and I returned it. See, the tithe is the Lord's. Where I renewed my mind to that is that, let's say I'm earning 10,000 rand. Technically speaking, I should have been earning 9,000. My boss probably decided, you know what, I'm going to pay him 9,000. And then God moved on him and put another 1,000 on top. And for some reason, the boss decided to give me 10,000 rand. But God built his thousand in there. I, that's non-negotiable. I said, that's non-negotiable. Because God organized that that 10% would be in my salary so that when I get it, I know if he's working with a farmer, he's working with someone that understands a generous lifestyle. I heard somebody say before, I've never yet met a tither who testifies they're not blessed. And I've never met a non-tither who says that they can afford the tithe. Hello. Did you get that? People that aren't tithing, oh, I can't afford it. I don't know. I don't know. Never met somebody who could tithe and is tithing. In other words, those people that are tithing always testify to seeing God's goodness in their life. Because as far as a generous person is concerned, there's no, you don't start debating it if it's, you understand God's kingdom. Because when you get that and you understand that the first 10% belongs to God, it's His, it's holy. And then He says, bring all that, where? To the storehouse. Why? Why? What's the purpose? That there may be food in my house. And sometimes people jump over that and get to the rest of the statement where it says, and see if I'll not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, there'll not be room enough to receive it. And I know why, because as a young Christian, when I was heavy in debt, 
struggling and battling to get by. When I first read that scripture, and I heard it for the first time, when God said, bring the tithe to the storehouse, that there's food in my house. Yes, hallelujah. And so that the windows of heaven will be open, and I will pour out for you so much stuff, you won't be able to put it in a bank. That's kind of how I heard it, that, man, I'm going to be a multimillionaire just by bringing this tithe. And that's not what it says. You bring the tithe so that that blessing is at work in your life. You are blessed, but we need to get it to work. Are you with me? But what's the purpose for it? That there's food in the house. Today, the house is the church of God. The food, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And a person that is a kingdom seeker, seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. Someone who gets that recognizes the tithe is there so that the gospel can be preached. A generous person gets that. I don't tithe to keep me blessed. I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. So the purpose of the tithe is so that others can receive the word of God. It's so that the gospel can be preached. And then God says, and prove me in this. Verse 11, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Listen to the wording now. So he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. He's talking to farmers. He's talking to farmers. Farmers farm with soil. How many you want your seed to produce maximum harvest? The health of your soil comes first. Before you sow seed. So a farmer is a farmer because he owns soil. In other words, he has a title deed. If someone does not have the title deed and tries to put something in that soil, he is called a devourer. He's trying to poison your soil. He doesn't have covenant. A title deed is covenant. Say that. A title deed is covenant. So a farmer has covenant with his soil. In other words, if someone gets a bunch of seed and just goes and finds some ground and begins to sow into it, but that ground belongs to someone else, that farmer is going to come out there and tear all that stuff out. Because it doesn't belong in, that's his soil. He's going to work with his soil. So, until you own soil, you can't sow seed. And the tithe is the covenant with God that says, I understand that when you created this earth, you gave it to me. When God created Adam and put Adam in the earth, he blessed him and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, take dominion. Remember that? Verse 29 of Genesis 1, and he gave him seed for food. That means Adam owned the soil. That made him a farmer. So now the seed that he had, he legally could sow. And it would produce a harvest. Then God did something interesting. He put a tree in the garden called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And said, now of every tree in this garden, you can tend it, you can eat from it, take the seed, produce whatever you want to do. But this tree, do not eat of that tree. For of the day you eat that tree, you will die. You will die. Now we know that death wasn't his physical death. He died spiritually, separated from God. That separation from God meant the whole of creation, the whole of creation, the whole of creation 
fell into the curse and destruction. Everything that's happening around us that is not of God is because of that fall back in the Garden of Eden. How many realize the day he ate that tree, it was a major calamity to the human race? Yes. If it was so dangerous, why put the tree there? Oh, come on. How many of you got kids? You know, if you say, don't touch that, that's all they think about now. If that tree was so dangerous, why put it there? Keep it in heaven. We'd all be fine. Or if it has to be on the earth, put it on Mount Everest. It takes us a few years to get there. No, he puts it in the garden a few meters from him and says, now don't eat it. Why? If it's so dangerous. Covenant is acknowledged through obedience. Covenant is acknowledged through obedience. As long as Adam tended the tree but did not eat it, it belonged to God alone. That's why Satan said, God knows something you don't. Yes, he's God. And if you acknowledge that that is God, he is right to it. That family was Adam's tithe. He was able to take that tree, take of that fruit. And I believe knowing the rest of the Word of God and understanding covenant, you would have presented that before God and said, look, I have not eaten what belongs to you. This is yours. You said, don't eat it. Look, I haven't eaten it. I honor you. I'm honoring your Lordship. I'm honoring your instruction. And as long as he did that, the blessing stayed alive in his life. The moment he ate what did not belong to him, that blessing shut down and the curse came in. The tithe is the Lord's. See, it's not about obeying a law. It's understanding covenant that if God gives me a field, he gives me something out of that field, the first tenth belongs to him. And as long as I honor him, I get to keep the field. I have title deed to the field. And if anything else comes onto that field and tries to destroy my crop, God himself will stop him because he says, that man has a title deed to this field. You get off the field. And now your field is in a place where it is open and receptive to seed. Now you're a farmer. Now you're a farmer. Your tithe is the title deed to your farm. That is the God that we serve, a generous, generous, generous God. He is always reaching out. He's the one that found us. He gave us life. He told us He's the healer. He told us He's the provider. That's how He introduced Himself to Abraham. He is El Shaddai, the one that suckers, the one that looks after and and, and feeds and protects. And that's His Spirit. He's a generous God. And when we're born again, we are born of His Spirit. We are born as generous people. So I want you to get a hold of that. Get a hold of the series today. It's going to help encourage us to know who we are so that we can also live this generous life. And when we live the generous life, we're expressing the heart of God. And we can reach so many more people by helping them through their situations. And when we do that, we reveal the heart of God. Those people will have a desire to know God and come to know them as their Lord and Savior as well. Well, I know you've been through some really serious challenges, and I know that God has already provided for them. And so we're going to stand in agreement on that. He is a generous God. He wants to help you. He wants to protect you and look after you. And no matter what you've been through, His great generosity has already provided for those needs. Let's pray right now. Father, I thank you for my friend. I know that no matter what they've been going through, the challenges that the enemy has thrown at their lives, you've already given the solution. Jesus bore away every sickness and took away every pain. And by His stripes, they've been healed. We thank you that you do supply every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You've blessed 
that house with every spiritual blessing. And so in the name of Jesus, I call on that blessing. And I speak it into that home in the name of Jesus. And no matter what the enemy's done to try and harm them, I turn it now in Jesus' name and that you would turn it to your glory and that you deliver them and provide and make sure that they walk in the fullness of your plan in their lives. And Father, I thank you for this and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, that prayer right now has gone to work and I believe you're going to see the result in a few days' time. And when it does, please write to us. I'd love to hear from you. I enjoy reading about the testimonies of what God has done in your life. And we want to share what we can with other people as well. That's all we have time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. God desires for us to be generous. The purpose of generosity is to reach a lost soul and get them through the door of Jesus Christ. The Word tells us that the generous will prosper and will always have provision. We serve a great God that has great plans for us. If you've been struggling in this area or would like to build your faith to live the generous life you've been called to, Alan Bagg will help you discover the importance of adopting a generous lifestyle. A person who lives generously will always give generously. This series will help you understand the powerful laws of giving and receiving. It will help you get rid of a poverty mindset. See, living the generous life is not just about giving. It's having your eyes open for where there are needs. This series will help you be generous as a child of God. You're going to see it all over the Bible. We serve a generous God and He's generous towards you so that you can be generous. Get this series and live the generous life that God desires for you. Contact Alan Bag Ministries by making use of any of these details. The message you've been watching on today's program is part of an entire series that Alan Bag recently taught at the Bay Christian Family Church. You can now get hold of this entire series by making contact with us here at Alan Bag Ministries. Order your series and have all these messages available to help encourage and build your faith.